asteroid explosion, a huge fireball over Earth could have been our second moon. We know that we have our regular moon, but they've told us that we may have other bodies around us that are much smaller that could be classified as moons. A fireball which exploded above Australia recently could have been our second moon. This is what astronomers have revealed this is by Sean Martin Express UK. An asteroid explosion above Australia happened in 2016. It could have been the Earth's orbit for a period of time known as a temporarily captured orbiter or a mini-moon. When we think of Earth's moon, we imagine a big bright white ball, that big lighting up our sky, but the definition of a moon is a natural satellite and is captured by the planet's gravitational pull. And this could also have happened to asteroids, captured asteroids uh, in our Earth orbit. So when experts say that Earth is more than, has more than one moon, they do not necessarily mean there are two or more of giant white rocks that we see shining above us. What they actually mean is Earth has pulled in smaller bodies, small asteroids, that are caught in Earth's orbit. And sometimes these many moons can fall into Earth's atmosphere, producing what we see as fireballs. Experts believe that this is what happened in 2016. They captured a small rock falling into our planet from space. The team from Curtin University in Australia established six cameras across hundreds of kilometers which monitor fireballs over the Australian outback. And using these cameras, researchers were able to determine that one fireball, which hit on August 22nd in 2016, was in fact a mini-moon of Earth. The team were able to determine this. They analyzed the rock's relatively slow velocity. It was only 11 kilometers per second. That's 6.8 miles per second. And the speed of the uh, asteroid suggests it had been orbiting Earth for a while, but losing momentum as it did so. It was just slowly coming closer to Earth. Experts from the university said the point of research allows them to study asteroids without the time-consuming and expensive nature of sending an aircraft, a spacecraft to the space rock and analyzing why some get caught in Earth's gravitational pull. But researchers said there's a lot more that has to be done to examine all this. They wrote in the Astronomical Journal, this is what they said, their statement says, we find that the probable capture time, capture velocity, capture semi-major axis, capture near-Earth object group, and capture mechanism all vary annually, with most captures occurring during Earth's aphelion or perihelion. And they say, we also discovered that the probability of capture occurring as a result of a close lunar encounter varies according to the lunar month uh, for this event. Now, the definition of a moon is a natural satellite that is captured by a planet's gravitational pull. And using the cameras, the researchers were able to determine that one fireball, which hit on August 22nd, 2016 over Australia was, in fact, one of our mini-moons. They said, we caution future analysis of possible temporary captured orbiter events to explore the effects of small variations in the initial conditions and various triangulation methodologies. In 2012, scientists used a supercomputer to run simulations on the movements of 10 million 10 million near-Earth asteroids that pass our planet. They ran these simulations against a trajectory of 18,000 space rocks that have been pulled into our orbit. That's astonishing. These results showed at least one mini-asteroid, usually measuring no more than three feet in diameter, virtually nothing compared to the 2,000-mile uh, diameter moon that we have, and that uh, is circling our planet at any given time. The asteroids usually caught up in Earth's orbit for about nine months before they continue their normal orbit around the Sun, but the team say they can get stuck there for decades. So the mini-moons do not have a normal orbit, though. They, uh, so the simulation also revealed that they twist and turn under the gravitational influence from our Earth, obviously.
Now, according to Wikipedia, there are claims of a lot more other moons around our Earth. Claims of existence of other moons of Earth, that is, of one or more natural satellites that orbit Earth other than our moon, Luna, have existed for some time. Several candidates have proposed that none has been confirmed. Since the 19th century, scientists made genuine searches for more moons. Although the moon is Earth's only natural satellite, there are a number of near-Earth objects, NEOs, with orbits that are in resonance with our Earth. These have been called second moons of Earth. Kamo Oalewa, 4692-19, an asteroid discovered just recently, April 27, 2016, is possibly the most stable quasi-satellite of Earth. As it orbits the Sun, Kamo Oalewa appears to circle around Earth as well. It is too distant to be a true satellite of Earth, but the best and most stable example of quasi-satellite, a type of near-Earth object, they appear to orbit a point other than Earth itself, such as the orbit path of neo-asteroid Quithin Quithni. Kruthni, C-R-U-I-T-H-N-E. Am I saying it right? Kruthni. The Earth Trojans, such as 210 TK7, are near-Earth objects orbiting the Sun, not Earth, in the same orbit path as Earth, and appear to lead or follow Earth along the same orbital path. Other small natural objects in orbit around the Sun may enter Earth's orbit. But let's go to the Petit's moon, the first major claim of another moon of Earth was made by French astronomer Frédéric Petit, director of the Toulouse Observatory, who in 1846 announced that he had discovered a second moon in an elliptical orbit around Earth. Then we have Wolfman's moons in 1898. Hamburg scientist Dr. Georg Wolfman announced that he had located a system of tiny moons orbiting Earth. He began his search for secondary moons based on hypothesis that something was gravitationally affecting the moon's orbit. And other claims. In 1918, astrologer Walter Gornald, known as, also known as Sefarial, claimed to have confirmed the existence of Wolfman's moons. He named it Lilith. Uh, Sefarial claimed that Lilith was a dark moon visible for most of the time, but he claimed that to be the first person in history to view it as it is, it crossed the sun. Now, there are others as well. Uh, temporary satellites. Let's go. 1913, the earliest known mention in the scientific literature of a temporary captured orbiter. Um, then we have 2006, just recently, 14th September 2006, an object estimated at 5 meters in diameter was discovered in near-polar orbit around the Earth. Originally thought to be a third-stage Saturn SIVB booster from Apollo 12, it was later determined to be an asteroid and designated 2006 RH120. The asteroid re-entered solar orbit after 13 months and is expected to return to Earth orbit after 21 years. In 2015, April 2015, an object was discovered orbiting Earth and initially designated 215 HP 116, but more detailed investigation quickly showed the object to be the Gaia spacecraft, and the object's discovery soon was retracted. And on October 3, 2015, a small object temporarily designated WT1190F was found to be orbiting the Earth every 23 days, it had been orbiting since at least 2009. It impacted the Earth November 13, 2015. 2016. On the 8th of February, 2016, an object about half a meter in diameter was discovered orbiting our Earth with a period of five days and then given the temporary designation XC83EOD and most likely lost. The object was later identified as a lost artificial satellite SR-11A or possibly its companion SR-11B, which were launched in 1976 and lost in 1979. On April 8, 2016, an object given the temporary designation S-50-9356 was discovered with an orbital period of 3.58 days, although it has a typical area-to-mass ratio of satellites 
It has a color typical of S-type asteroids. It was later identified as the Yongzhen 1 stage from the launch of Chinese navigation satellites. And in 2017, on 8th of December 2017, the object YX205B9 was discovered with an orbital period of 21 days on an eccentric orbit, taking it from slightly beyond the geocentric satellite ring to almost twice the distance of the moon, it was later identified as a booster stage from Chang'e 2 mission. This is from Wikipedia. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.